Grade 6 Math, number 3.1b. Convert fractions and decimals, and we're going to discuss non-terminating decimals. In video 3.1a, we talked about mixed numbers. We talked about terminating decimals and non-terminating decimals. And we actually changed a 0.25 to 25 hundredths and back to 0.25 with division. We also changed 3 eighths to 0.375, 375 thousandths, and we learned about non-terminating decimals like 0.6 or 0.3, and how the bar above the digits denotes a repeating digit, and an ellipsis, a dot dot dot, can also mean that the digits repeat. I prefer the bar because I don't like confusing the ellipsis dots with the decimal points. So, we're going to go over what we did, one-third as a decimal, we turn the the denominator into the divisor, and even though you think it would be crazy to fit the 3 into the 1, we do it by adding a decimal point and a 0. 3 can fit into 10 3 times. 3 times 3 is 9. We subtract and get 1 left over, so we add another 0. And 3 goes into 10 3 times. 3 times 3 is 9. We do our subtraction, we get 1, and we add another 0. And this keeps happening and happening and happening. So what we do is we just stop and put 0.3 with a bar over the top because it becomes a non-terminating decimal when we try to convert it. See? It'll just continue having 3s and 10s coming down like that. We also discussed greatest common factors and how we use them to bring fact fractions to their lowest terms. 14, 40 seconds, we list their factors and then choose the largest, greatest one they have in common. So for 14 and 42, we list all their factors. 14 has a 1, a 2, a 7, a 14. 42 has a 1, a 2, a 3, a 6, a 7, a 14, and a 21. And we choose the one that they have in common that is the largest, so that would be 14. We divide both numbers by this greatest common factor and change the fraction to its lowest terms. We reduce it. 14 divided by 4 is 1. 42 divided by 14 is 3. 14 over 42 becomes one-third. We can change any fraction to a decimal by making the denominator the divisor and the numerator the dividend. We add a decimal point and zeros to make it work. 3 and 7 a's, we put the 3 off to the side. The whole 3 gets put off to the side, and we just deal with the 7 a's. The 8 becomes the divisor. The 7 numerator becomes the dividend. 8 can't go into 7, so we add a decimal point and a zero. So 8 times 8 is 64, so it can go in 8 times. We write it above the 0. We put our 64 into our subtraction, and we get 6 left over. So we drop another 0. 8 goes into 60 7 times. It's 8 times 7 is 56. We do our subtraction, we get a 4, and we drop another 0. 8 times 5 is 40. We do our multiplication and subtraction and get 0. And we have now turned 7 eighths into 0.875. Now we tack our whole number back on, and 3 and 7 eighths becomes 3.875. See? 1 and 5 sixteenths, we do the same thing. The 16 is the divisor, the 5 becomes the dividend. We add a decimal point and a 0. 16 can fit into 50 three times. 16 times 3 is 48. We do our subtraction and get a 2. We add another 0. It fits into 20 one time. We do our subtraction, we get a 4, we tack on another 0. 16 goes into 40, 2 times, that's 32. We do our subtraction and get an 8, we tack on another 0 and get 80. 16 fits into 80, 5 times perfectly. So we know that 5 sixteenths becomes 0 0.3125. We tack our one whole number back on the front of it, and we end up with 1 and 3125 as the decimal point, that's 3,125 ten thousandths. See? We have 2.7. If we want to change it into a fraction, it's very easy because we just use place value. We know in the place value chart that this is the tenths and this is the hundredths. So if we want to do 7 tenths, it's just 0.7. For 13 and 27 hundredths, 27 hundredths is like this on the place value chart, so we just put 27 over 100. It tells us what the denominator is going to be. 
71 and 3 thousandths, we just put a 3 over a thousand. 58 thousandths becomes 58 over a thousand, but it can be reduced to lowest terms. I just cut it in half. I knew that half of 50 was 25 and half of 8 was 4, so I added 25 and 4 and got 29 and I put it over half of a thousand, which is 500. And I know 29 is a prime number, so that's as low as it's going to go. So that turned into 29 five hundredths when it was reduced. See? If we had 4 and 5 elevenths, the 11 becomes the divisor, the 5 is the dividend. We put the 4 off onto the side, and we ask how many times can 11 fit into 5? None. Can it fit into 50 if we add a decimal point and a zero? Yep. 11 times 4 is 44, so we put the 4 up there. We did our subtraction and got a 6. We added a 0. 11 fits into 60 5 times, because it's 55 times if you multiply it by 5. So we did that and did our subtraction. We got a 5 left over. And we know 4 can fit into that, because 11 times 4 is 44. And what ended up happening was we got 50 and 60 and 50 and 60 each time we added a 0, and our decimal... Uh, point, our decimal number became 454545, so we know that this is a repeating decimal, a non-terminating decimal. So because the 4 and the 5 are the numbers that repeated, that's what we put the bar over. 4 and 5 elevenths became 4.45 with the bar over the top like that. See? So, this is how you convert fractions and decimals. Going from a decimal to a fraction is very easy because you already know the place value, what the denominator is going to be. All you have to remember is that you need to bring it to its lowest terms by using the greatest common factor. It's a little tougher to turn a fraction into a decimal because you have to do long division. But don't let it scare you. Just keep adding the zeros, and if it starts repeating, catch yourself. You don't have to do it three times. Once it does it two full times, it's going to do it again. So we could have stopped right there and said, okay, we already see it's repeating. All right? So that's converting. No big deal. All right? You can do this. Just keep working. Keep up the good work. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye.